It is great to be here today with so many grassroots leaders and advocates. When we look to the progress we've made on gender equality, everything from protecting the right to choose to creating more flexible parental leave, we see the story of people like you who've dedicated their lives to defending women's rights. Thank you for your work. But I know that it's not enough for me to simply stand up here and recognize your leadership. As a government, we have to stand with you as a partner and as an ally. Yesterday, at the opening of this conference, I talked about Canada's responsibility to lead. Because the unfortunate truth is that we live in a world where rights are increasingly under threat. Women don't have to imagine not being able to access health care when they need it. They don't have to imagine being denied the right to choose what's best for their health and their future. For far too many people, that's the reality and that's unacceptable. On sait que les femmes, et les femmes seulement, devraient prendre les décisions qui concernent leur corps. Lorsqu'on parle d'avortement, les femmes doivent avoir accès à des services sûrs et légaux. Pas juste parce que c'est leur droit, mais parce que les procédures non réglementées peuvent mettre leur vie en danger. Mais protéger la santé sexuelle des femmes ne se limite pas seulement au droit à l'avortement. On doit aussi être proactif pour aider les femmes et les filles à prendre des décisions saines et éclairées concernant leur corps. On doit veiller à ce qu'elles reçoivent une éducation sexuelle complète dans nos écoles. Of course, we can't talk about sexual and reproductive rights in isolation from the rest of a woman's health. Because just like there are 200 million women who don't have access to contraception every day, hundreds more die from preventable causes related to pregnancy and childbirth. So Canada is not just speaking up, we're stepping up. Today, I can announce that our government is increasing our ongoing commitment to funding for sexual and reproductive health rights and maternal, newborn and child health. We will be raising our funding to $1.4 billion annually to support women and girls' health around the world. And with $700 million of the annual investment dedicated to sexual and reproductive health rights, we're focusing on the most neglected areas of this field. This is a game changer that will empower 18 million women and girls in developing countries by 2030. But you know and I know that this is not a zero-sum issue. We can help women access birth control while also investing to make sure that newborns don't become orphans. Health is health. To be frank, there are some politicians who want to drive a wedge between these two goals to create a division where none should exist. There are politicians here in Canada who have called our government's investments exporting an ideological agenda. Well, we couldn't disagree more. This should not be a political issue. These divisions are playing out globally with devastating consequences, and women deserve better. The women who Minister Bibo met in Cox's Bazaar who experienced unimaginable abuse and violence, deserve better. 
the women who Parliamentary Secretary Kara sat down with in the Philippines at a sexual health program, who are being empowered to make decisions about their own lives, deserve better. Si on veut réduire l'écart en matière de santé, on doit faire passer les femmes en premier. C'est juste, c'est pas le temps de faire de la politique. Je veux donc remercier tous les organismes à but non lucratif, dont 100 ONG canadiens, qui se sont mobilisés pour cette cause. Notre gouvernement vous a entendu et aujourd'hui, tout votre travail porte fruit. Chaque femme, peu importe où elle vit, doit avoir accès à des soins de santé sûrs et de qualité. Here in Canada, we've made great strides over the last 50 years in expanding women's health services. But access to safe reproductive services remains uneven, even in Canada. There is still more work to do. So just a few weeks ago, Minister Petipa Taylor announced the lifting of restrictions for prescribing misogynic miso, giving more women, especially in rural and rural areas, access to reproductive health options. And our government is also investing in our researchers and our nonprofit organizations, like Ovarian Cancer Canada, to support their vital work in preventing, screening, and treatment for diseases that women are facing. My friends, when we prioritize women, everyone benefits. When women are healthy, they can focus on making a positive difference in the world, whether as entrepreneurs, artists, or innovators. When girls are empowered and informed, they become leaders who lift their communities up. Aujourd'hui, grâce à un investissement annuel de 1.4 milliard de dollars dans la santé des femmes et des filles, on franchit une autre étape pour faire de cette vision une réalité. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Thank you so much for your activism, for your strength, for your leadership. We are doing this together. Merci. Thank you.